In this guide, I'm going to show you how to get set up with Condo, which is a command line tool geared towards Python developers that lets us manage environments and packages. The way we're going to get set up with Conda is using something called Mini Conda, which is an installer that's going to set up Conda on our computers. And this is just in contrast to something called Anaconda, which is a larger bundle of software that includes the Conda command line program, as well as some other utilities. That might be something you want to check out, especially if you're working in data science, scientific computing, there's a lot of utilities related to that field built into Anaconda. But we're going to keep things streamlined in this video, so we're going to go the mini Conda route. And so our first goal is just getting Conda up and running on our computer. And then following that, our second goal is going to be to create an environment. An environment is just an isolated workspace where we can customize the outside software or packages that we're using for a particular project. All right, so we'll set up an environment, we'll pull in some outside packages as an example, and then we'll tie it all up by just running a basic Python script that uses some external packages just to see the process from start to finish. So jumping right in, the first thing you want to do is download Miniconda. You can go to the link I have on the screen. I'll also include it in the description to get to the download page. And then on this page, if we scroll down, we'll see a series of installer links. Windows users, you only have one option, so that's going to be simple. Just click that, download the installer. For Mac users, you have a handful of different options depending on your processor. If you're using an older Intel processor, you're going to want to download one of those installers. Or if you have any of the new M processors, you can download the M version they have listed here. And even though it says M1, this will also work for M2, M3, or whatever M version is out as of uh, when you watch this video. Now, from the processor selection, there's another option you have to choose is uh, whether you want the bash installer or the package installer. Go ahead and get the package installer. It's going to give you a nice GUI interface that's going to walk you through the installation steps. So once you've located the appropriate installer, go ahead and click it to download it. In my case, I downloaded it before recording this video. So I'm just going to go over to my downloads folder. I'm going to locate the Mac installer and double click that to start the process. Uh, and in a moment, when I finish with this on the Mac side of things, I will switch over to the Windows side of things. Pretty much the process is the same, whether you're on Mac or Windows, but there is one small difference I will point out on Windows. Uh, but let's get through the Mac installer first. So here's our introduction page. We're going to click Continue. Here's the uh, README. We're going to click Continue again. Here's the license. We'll continue through that. We're going to confirm that we agreed to the license. Here we can uh, customize if we want to install this in a non-default uh, location. I'm just going to leave it as the default and click Install. It's going to ask for my computer password, so I'll type that in. It's going to ask for permissions to my Downloads folder. I'll click OK. And that's all done, so I'll click Close to exit out of the installer. I can go ahead and move it to my trash can. And then because Conda is command line based, I'm going to pull up my command line program. On Mac, that's typically your terminal program. I am using a variation of terminal called iTerm2, but it works the same as terminal. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, with conda installed is run the command conda init. And that's just going to go ahead and set up some settings on my computer to make conda accessible from the command line. Um, in my case, it's saying no change. That's just because I've previously had conda installed on my computer, but uh, you should see some changes propagated here. And then the test to see if it worked is you're just going to invoke conda. And perfect, that's what you want to see, some information about how to use it. If you see something like command not found, it means there was a problem with either initiating it or perhaps as part of the installation. All right, so we're set up on Mac. Let me switch over to my Windows install. Here you can see I've got my downloads folder open and I've already downloaded the Windows installer for Miniconda. So I'm going to double click that to get started. I'll click next. I'll agree to the license agreement. I'll choose my installation type. I'm going to install it for just uh, my currently logged in user. I'll leave it as the default install location. And then on this screen, I want to check off the second option to add mini conda to my path environment variable. This is going to make it so that the conda command line program is accessible via the command line program I use on Windows, which is git bash. Now, if you use one of the default command line programs that comes with Windows, something like Command Prompt or PowerShell, you don't have to choose this. In fact, they recommend not choosing this uh, because there is a way to launch the mini conda program via those command line programs from a uh, menu that's going to be added to your Windows Start menu. Uh, but if you're using some alternative program like Git Bash or Windows Subsystem for Linux or any Bash-based alternative, um, I do recommend adding mini conda to your path environment variable. All right, so I'm going to check that off and I'll leave all the other options as the default and continue with the install process. And here's the final screen. I'm going to uncheck these options to see some welcome information and just click finish. 
And then just like I did on the Mac in my command line program, I'm going to run conda init. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It is failing because I need to actually restart git bash so it recognizes the changes that the conda installer made in terms of adding the conda path uh, to my environment variable. So long story short, let's close git bash and reopen it. And let's try that again. We're going to say conda init. And then as instructed, we'll once again close and reopen git bash for those changes to take effect. And then to test things out, we're just going to invoke conda. And perfect, there's the output about the conda command indicating that it was installed and we were able to locate it from within our command line program. All right, so now that we've got it installed and set up on both Mac and Windows, uh, let's dig into using conda. The first thing we want to do is learn about how to create environments. Environments allow us to set up isolated workspaces where we can pull in the external packages that are specific to a given project. And this is really useful in Python because uh, we're often working with a variety of different packages. If you're doing, say, a game development project, that's going to require a whole set of packages that's going to be very different than if you're doing something related to, say, data science. Uh, within those two projects, you might even have different uh, requirements in terms of the version of Python you're using. And by creating those projects in isolated environments, you can really customize them to meet the needs of those different projects. Uh, to demonstrate this, let me switch back over to my Mac side of things. Uh, but everything I'm about to show will work the exact same if you're working on Windows. Uh, and what I'm going to do is create a new conda environment using our conda command. So we're going to say conda create. We're going to include the name flag. Uh, and this is going to allow us to indicate the name of our environment. And for this example, I'm just going to call it demo. I'll give that a moment to set the environment up. And then as instructed to make this our current working environment, we're going to run conda activate followed by the name of the environment, which in this case is demo. And now you can see that our prompt is prefixed with the name of that environment, just as a reminder that that is where we're currently working. And the first thing I want to do in this environment is install Python. So we're going to say conda install, and then the name of the package for Python is simply just Python. Uh, if there was a particular version of Python we wanted to get, we can include that as part of our command. So for example, I could say if I wanted 3.8, I would just say Python equals 3.8. Uh, or if we omit the version number, it's just going to grab the latest version of uh, whatever is available for that package. All right, so let's uh, run this and install Python. And then just to confirm that that worked, we can run the command conda list. And this is going to output all the packages currently installed in this environment. So we should see Python listed there. You can see it grabbed version 3.12. But you'll also note a list of other packages that were installed as well. And these packages are just dependencies of Python. So when we pulled in Python, we got these packages as well. Uh, and this is how dependency management works. Uh, when you're dealing with outside packages, they often require other packages as well. And your dependency management program is going to make sure all of them are installed. So moving on beyond Python, let's pull in some specific packages for an example I want to put together that's going to do some basic data visualization. So the first outside package I want to pull in beyond Python uh, is a package called NumPy. This is going to allow us to do some number crunching. All right, so following the same procedure we saw for installing Python, we're going to say conda install followed by the name of the package, which in this case is NumPy. And then another package I want to get is something called matplotlib. This is going to allow us to do some data visualization. So we're going to say conda install matplotlib. And once again, let's just do conda list just to make sure we have everything we need. All right, so we've got a bunch of packages now because remember we're getting not only the packages re uh, request, but all of their dependencies. Uh, but skimming through here, of course, we've got Python still. There's NumPy and there's matplotlib. All right, so I think we have everything we need in this environment for the example. Uh, for the code for the example, let's go over to the notes that accompany this video. And let's scroll down. This is all the instructions and setup uh, things we've already done. We want to go down here to the example program. And we're just going to grab this bit of Python code. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to bring up my code editor. And let's just paste that in. And I'm going to save this as a new file. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop, and I'll call it demo.py. Uh, and you could skim through the code for the general idea of what's going on. It's just generating a visualization of a simple uh, sine wave 
There's comments throughout, but I'm not really focused in the mechanics of the Python code in this video. This is more just about getting your Python uh, environments and workspaces set up. So I just want to run this and make sure it's working. Specifically, I want to make sure we have access to the packages we're importing up top. So there's our reference to our NumPy package, which we should have access to, as well as matplotlib. So we just want to really make sure that this works. All right, so let's test this out. Let's go back to command line. I'm going to move over to my desktop and I'm going to invoke it with the Python command. So we're going to say python demo.py. And there we go, there's our visualization. So with that, hopefully that gives you a good sense of the basic flow of working with something like Conda, where you create an environment for the projects you're working on, and then you pull in the packages you need for that project. And then of course you write your code that's going to use those packages. Now to wrap things up, a couple miscellaneous points. Uh, the first is about finding the packages that you're going to be using in your projects. Uh, when working in Conda, they have a central repository called Conda Forge. So you can go there and search for what packages are available. Alternatively, another popular source of packages in the world of Python is the pip repositories. Uh, pip is another command line based dependency management program used in Python. Uh, and if we look at our list of packages that we have available, you actually see pip listed because it comes installed when you install Python. So even though we're working in this Conda environment, we can use pip as well. So if you find a package that's available via the pip repositories, you can install it via pip. And it would just look like this pip install, whatever the name of the package is. So you've definitely got options and some flexibility there. The other closing note I want to leave us with is just a little bit of an emphasis on this idea of environments. So what I want to do is I want to actually create a separate environment and install some different software there and just show how we can create these isolated workspaces. All right, so to do this, I want to first get out of my demo environment. So I'm going to say conda deactivate. And then just like we did earlier, to create a new environment, we're going to say conda create. We'll give it a name. I'll just call this demo2. We'll activate demo2. And just like we did in our original demo, we are going to install Python. But this time, let's go with an older version. So let's uh, actually install 3.8 here. And now with that installed, I'm going to run a command called which, and I'm going to have it uh, locate where in my computer it's finding this Python install when I'm in this demo2 environment. All right, and you can see it's pointing to a directory within my mini conda folder. You can see reference to the demo2 environment, and then Python is accessible within there. Um, the other thing I want to look at, let's have it tell us what version of Python we're running here. So we're going to say Python dash dash version, and we can see we're at 3.8. All right, now let's switch environments. So I'm going to say conda activate. I'm going to go back to my demo, my original demo environment. And once again, we'll run the which command. All right, and this time you could see it's finding an install of Python that's in our demo folder within mini conda, so not our demo two. So it's a completely different install of Python. And uh, to back that up, if we have it output the version again, you can see in our original demo environment, we're running a newer version of Python at 3.12. All right, so again, the point here was just to highlight how in these different environments, we could have different packages, even different versions of the same package installed, and we could run those things in isolation and meet the different needs of our projects. So hopefully this was a useful introduction to working with Conda and just in general working with packages and environments in a Python context. If anything I showed in this video did not work on your end as expected, feel free to leave a comment and I can help you troubleshoot.